Test, 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 test. <clears throat> hey, what's up, guys? Uh, today, I wanted to do a It's in the Year video. Uh, FIFA just released their kind of short list for the best players, and you're going to vote. And those players were released for Team of the Year. And I kind of want to make my own team, kind of show you guys and explain to you guys why I picked the certain players that I wanted to pick and who I think deserves Team of the Year, personally. And let's get right into it. So, we have goalkeeper. It's a 4-4-3. Four, 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 Sorry, 4-3-3 four, three, three formation. And uh, we're kind of limited in some sense. You know, only three midfielders, only three attackers. Um, but... You know, it's uh, yeah, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. We'll be okay. Um, so starting out with goalkeeper, the shortest we have isn't too bad. Um, Courtois, Kobo, Magnan, Alisson, Ederson, Chesney, Trap, Bonu, Loris, and Martinez. I think this one's pretty easy. I think anybody else would be incorrect, in my opinion, personally. I think the best goalkeeper right now, currently. Uh, is easily Thibaut Courtois. Um, he, you know, Madrid have been excellent. At least last season, they've been excellent. This season, I think they've been doing really well as well. You know, I know Barca's ahead of the table, but, you know, Madrid is not too far behind. And, uh, you know, he's been fantastic. I mean, if you could rewatch that Champions League final that he had against Liverpool, the amount of saves that he was making and the fact that they were able to keep a clean sheet was all purely because of him. Because Liverpool were attacking fairly well. Pushing, pushing, pushing the pace, pushing the pace. But it, what they were producing wasn't enough to go past Courtois. And so, you know, that game alone and obviously the way that their journey, right? Romich's journey of going through the finals, beating team by team, coming back. You know, a lot of the team is going to be Madrid. Just an FYI. A lot of the team is going to be Madrid. And it's just because they had a crazy season last year, you know? Almost unstoppable. You know, all in Robertson, you could say Alisson, right? Alisson's a great keeper as well. You know, they also made the final, but, you know, it's kind of tough to make an argument between Alisson and Courtois when Courtois has won the majority of the good trophies. Alisson, I think Liverpool only won two cups, but Courtois won La Liga. They won the Champions League. You know, you can't really argue against that, can you? Martinez, sure, you know, he won the World Cup this year, but uh, is that enough to call him the best goalkeeper? I don't think so. But, you know, and all these other guys, they're all great goalkeepers, but it's definitely Courtois. This is kind of an easy one. Nothing more to say. Uh, and we go on to the defenders. The shortlist is pretty long for defenders. Uh, Marquinhos, Piragi, Jao, Close, Silva, Davies, Fringpong, Militao, Ruben Dias, Grimaldo, Hakimi, Hernandez, James, Gulubali, Otamendi, Bremer, Sule, Tomori, Trippier, Van Dijk, Gradiol, Kunde, Romero, Upamacano, and Acuna. Now, a lot of defenders in the shortlist, a lot of great defenders. But this one is also, I think in my opinion, a little easy to do as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think, uh, I think these are going to be no-brainers, in my opinion. I think at first... Uh, you'll see why I'm doing this, but I'm going to start with... I just had him here. I just literally saw him here. He's in this page. Cancelo at right back. If you can, if I can move him. Now, Cancelo, one of the most creative players in the world currently, right? You could play, I think, any position. I mean, City started him at right wing one game. Was he good? Eh, not really. He's not used to the position. But the creativity is there. The ability is there. He could play in any position. He's so versatile. You see him always free roaming from left to right to midfield to everywhere, right? And, you know, it's a player that has so much class and so much talent that I feel like he has to be in this team. He has to. He's been such a great player this year. Overall, you know, City winning the title, he was really important. And in the beginning of the season, obviously pre-World Cup, because I think there's a lot of fatigue going in after the World Cup, so he hasn't really been playing. But, you know, pre-World Cup... We were seeing him do like crazy things, Travella passes, um, all these things, you know. So throughout this whole season, he's kind of shown how much of a great player he is. So for me, this is easy. I right back, and the Cancelo is the best right back, left back in the world, full back in the world, in my opinion. That's why I have Cancelo here. 
Now, here's where it gets maybe a little bit, you know, people may have a little bit of questionings to do it. Uh, for center backs, I have Ruben Dias and I have Eder Militao, right? Now, people may think, you're a City fan, like, what's this, right? What's the City bias? You know, why do you have Ruben Dias there? You know, right now he's injured, right? I can't really make that much of an argument this season. Because in all honesty, he hasn't really played that many games. But last year, last season, he was great for us, right? Other than the complete crumble of a game we had in the semis against Madrid in the last 20 minutes of the game, you know, he played almost a perfect game that day. The whole team did, you know, other than those last 20 minutes, including extra time. But, you know, excluding that game, the whole season, you know, he showed that he... He is the, one of the top defenders in the world, right? He's so young, right? People forget this guy is, I think, only 24, 25, right? He's still a young player. He's he's aggressive. He's hard with the tackles, you know, and he's a leader, more importantly. I feel like for our back line, we kind of need that leader when company was gone, and I think Ruben Dias was just perfect, uh, especially when we bought him that first season. Um I, I don't really see any center backs here that I could maybe make an argument for. I mean, other than the possibility of Van Dijk, right? Made the Champions League final, you know, great, all that. But when I look back at it, right, you know, Liverpool lost that final. They only won two cups. City won the Premier League, right? The more important cup, in my opinion, the bigger cup. On top of that, um, you know, it's just Van Dijk even this season, has had a worse season than, in my opinion, Ruben Dias. And Ruben Dias has been injured most of the season. You know, so uh, I could see the argument for Van Dijk. I get it. I see it. Um, but, you know, and even like even like Liverpool's Champions League run, it was very easy compared to the other bracket. Very easy. One bracket had Chelsea, PSG, Madrid, City. The other bracket had like Villarreal, I think Bayern, but then Bayern was against Villarreal. I even forgot who Liverpool played against, but it was, I don't think it was that good of a team, if I'm not mistaken, right? So, even Liverpool had the easy side in the bracket, and they made it to the final, sure, props to them, but they lost, and the other two cups they lost, um, so, which is why I don't think, which is why I think, you know, I would put Ruben Dias ahead of him. Yeah, it's, you could say bias, whatever, but that's what I personally think. I think Ruben Dias has been better this year. Uh, Militao, I don't think I need to really explain any further, um... Not having at least a Madrid defender here is maybe a little ignorant. I think, you know, you know, Militao has been great, right? For Madrid, especially versatile, he could play right back, center back. Um, and, you know, that Madrid team, that that kind of uh, Ferioto team that they had, I don't see why you wouldn't put Militao here, right? Once again, same argument for Van Dijk. Uh, people could make the same argument for Marquinhos as well. But I don't think they've done enough. I mean, if you want to count Ligue 1, sure. But, you know, we all kind of see how, you know, how Ligue 1 is. It's not that much of a competitive league. You expect PSG to win every year when you have Messi, Mbappe, Neymar, right? So is that much of an accomplishment? No. And that sucks for Marquinhos, but that's just simply the facts. So that's why I left out Marquinhos. And yeah, all the other defenders here, they're great. But I don't think anything compared to these two other than maybe Van Dijk. Um, to keep it simple, left back. This won't be interesting. Uh, maybe a lot of people may not like this. I feel like a lot of people may agree with this. I think it's Theo Hernandez. Now, I think this one is pretty, pretty not that hard to kind of justify, right? Uh, because when you look at the other options, they're okay, right? Um, but I think Hernandez is a good, good choice at left back. You know, one guy's COA. Right, I think that's a big, big accomplishment. They hadn't won in so many years, and when you look at Calcio A, it's super competitive now. Probably more competitive than La Liga is, um, compared to seeing all the talent, all the teams. It's not the Juventus every season wins anymore. Inter is back, Napoli's back, Milan is back, you know, Florentina. Like, there's a lot of great teams in Italian football now. It's a lot slower, right? So it's, you know, it's a very different pace, which I'm not saying it's more enjoyable watching La Liga, maybe, or the Prem, but um, 
you know, it's, it's simple, right? Like I think, I, I, I think, you know, it's a great league. There's a lot of competition and they won at the end. And I think they, I think he deserves to be on this team. And then you could also consider the fact that he made it to the World Cup final with France. His brother gets injured, tears his ACL, boom, slots right back in, and they make it to the final, right? So I think it's uh, it's not that hard to justify why I see Hernandez kind of here at left back. Uh, look at the other options. Uh, you could really only maybe say Davies, right? Or you could say, like, put Cancelo left back, put Hakimi at right back, you know? But... Nah, I think Cancelo is definitely there. It's just a matter of maybe you could say Hernandez or Hakimi. And I say Hernandez. EA is probably going to have Hakimi in there because they're always going to have a PSG player. But um, I think Hernandez deserves a team of the year. I think he's probably, you know, top three fullbacks in the world right now. So I don't see why he doesn't deserve to be there. So that's my that's my back line and my goalkeeper. We're going out to midfielders. This one, I think, is going to be very easy, too. You know? Nothing too hard for this one, in my opinion. Uh, I'm putting De Bruyne in there. A lot of people may not have De Bruyne. I get it. Right? They say he's overrated. They say this. They say that. You know, this is a guy that every midfielder is trying to replicate their game. Right? They're trying to compare him. They're trying to, they're trying to be him. But no one is him. It's that simple. No one is De Bruyne. Uh, the vision, the precision, everything about De Bruyne is picture perfect. And when you look at the run that City had in the Champions League, he was very important in that run. Him and Riyadh. You know, it was it, it was them two that were really helping that Man City team. And, you know, it sucks how it turned out, but it was he was very important. He was very important in our league run as well. You know, trying to climb back win the Prem. I, I, I don't see why De Bruyne shouldn't be on this team, <clears throat> in my opinion. I think he is the best midfielder in the world. A lot of people may argue that. I get it, but he is. There's a lot of people that agree with that. So why is he not in the team of the year? I think it's that straightforward. He's the best midfielder in the world. He should be in the team of the year. Very simple. Now, the other two. Like I said, this is going to be a Madrid team. And... These are the other two greatest midfielders in the world, in Luca and Tony Cruz. Now, I mean, when these guys retire, we're all going to be upset on on how we kind of underappreciated how good these guys are, right? You know, the signing of Cruz to Real Madrid for such a cheap price. Is going to be one of the, like, when we look back at it, one of the best bargains we've ever seen in football history, right? Bayern didn't want him. He wins the World Cup. And then he just goes to Real Madrid easily. And we're talking about one of the best free kick takers, the best set piece takers, a guy with a rocket of a foot, just going to one of the best teams in the world and then winning five UCLs. I mean, come on, right? It can't get any better than that, in my opinion. And so, you know, Tony Cruz, you just look at how Madrid have played this year. Him and Modric have been so clinical. I mean, Modric is, again, top three midfielder in the world. Easily, Modric, Luka. People are going to say Bellingham. People are going to say this. Like th These are the youngsters, right? We're impressed by them, and we rate them so highly because they're so young and they're so technical. They have so much pace. They're fun to watch, Right? But when we see someone like a Busquets or a Modric, we kind of underappreciate how they keep the tempo of the game, how they kind of pass the game along, and how they kind of move forward with the ball. We don't really realize that. We want to see that that attacking midfielder, you know, going forward, going, you know, pressing high, right? Like De Bruyne kind of, you know? We like seeing De Bruyne because he presses the ball forward, pushes forward, presses high, right? We like seeing Belling. We start like seeing Pedri. We like seeing Gavi like that. But we then underappreciate Modric, Cruz, Busquets, you know, these CDMs, these kind of holding midfielders that maintain the tempo, right? And ping these long balls to these wingers and to the forwards. And and they're crucial to the game plan of a lot of these teams. And we just kind of underappreciate that. And I feel like, you know, it's a sentiment that these two should be in the team of the year. And, you know, like I said, no offense to any of these other midfielders. I mean, some honorable mentions, 
right? Bellingham, sure. Uh, Pedri, sure, you know, right? Um, Bernardo has been good. He didn't really play that much last season. You know, we were about to sell him this summer. We weren't even really playing him recently, but last season. You know, has been on the bench, so he's, eh, it was whatever. I'm surprised Mane's on you. I don't know why he's not a forward, but, you know, well, that's fine. Uh, Caicedo, right? I think that's another one. Um, do I see Caicedo replacing De Bruyne? No. People may think, hey, you got to replace De Bruyne. Full Madrid midfield, sure. But I don't think he replaces De Bruyne. I think De Bruyne and Modric stay there. Uh, people are going to argue Valverde or Caicedo for Cruz. Now, I could see that. I could see Caicedo. I can't really see Valverde. I think Valverde this season has been really bright. I can see why people, recently biased wise, they could put Valverde. Um, but, you know, but if you look at last season, it's Caicedo and, and Cruz and Modric that were in that midfield. You know, Valverde came in for Caicedo when he left, obviously. And now Valverde kind of plays that CDM center mid role and now that right wing role as well. You know, since the way that Ancelotti played in in the final, the way he used them. So, um, I like I said, recently bias, I could see why you put Valverde, but it's Caicedo. I think it's that simple. There's nothing really more to it. You got to have Caicedo in there um, if you want to replace Cruz, right? Um, but I could see either or. I can't. I can't argue for either or. And yeah, that's about it, really. Like I said, I think it's really a Madrid City dominated team. Uh, I have Enzo there. I mean, um, is that Enzo Fernandez? Yeah, Enzo Fernandez there. Um, not Enzo. Deo. Deo Hernandez there. Uh, as kind of like a replacement. So, you know. But other than that, like I said, it's gonna be dominated by these two teams in particular, just because of the runs they've had and how well they've played. Go to attackers now. Now, I mean, we you have this guy here. If this guy's not on your team, you're dumb. I mean, he has to be on the team. He's won the Ballon d'Or. It's official. He's going to be on the team. You could not vote for him, but he is going to have him. So you may as well put him in the team. Don't waste your don't waste your vote, you know, on some other guy. Just you know, just vote him in already. You know, he's going to be on the team. The question is, who is going to be side by side with Benzema? Now you kind of look. I'm just gonna have another look here. There's a lot of sh there's a lot of attackers on the short list. McFrappe, right? McFrappe. No, I'm kidding. Mbappe, right? Uh, best attacker in the world, probably, right? We say a lot about Benz. Sure, I think Benz is up there as well. Top three, top two. But when you look at Mbappe. It's him and Messi that are the best best attackers in the world. And probably Benzema at three, in my opinion. You know, this guy gets a lot of slack, a lot of criticism. He is in a farmer's league. He's in a league where it's just nobody's. You you play against like, you know, you know, pe pe you play against footballers that aren't as skilled as other footballers compared to how other competitive leagues are, right? And so that's true, league-wise. But guess what? He won the league last year, right? So he did his job there. Champions League, it wasn't his fault. It wasn't. You saw how he played in that Madrid game? He was so scary. So scary. He made every defender that was coming against him look like dust. Literally. Literally. Uh, the one this Largo that he scored against uh, Courtois, where he did like the little step over, puts the ball to his left, and then just like goes around the goalkeeper. I mean, bro, that game should have been done and dusted, right? But it's players like the it was their back line, their midfield that completely collapsed, that allowed Madrid to come back. And and yeah, that's simply that's simply what happened. That's exactly what happened. And so I look at that. It wasn't his fault. I look at this World Cup. Second best player in the World Cup. Other than Messi. So, you know, not having this guy is also ignorant, in my opinion. You know, him him and Benz should definitely be in this team. 
uh, it's 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 very it's very in our, like you can't argue about it. You can't argue about it. This third player though, this attacker, this third attacker, that's gonna be paired with these two. Is a question, right? Now, who I think is gonna be actually on this team is Messi. It's gonna be Messi, right? You know, won the World Cup. Why would he not be on this team? Right? He's doing great this season. Why wouldn't he be? Unpopular opinion, who I think really should be on this team instead of Messi. Just because a lot of people like the recency bias, right? They enjoy it. That's all they remember. They don't remember anything else that's happened, right? Because we had a great football in the beginning of the year. We only remember what we had recently. Cool. But this guy, he has to be there. He has to. Now, he's probably not going to be in the main team. They're probably going to put Messi. Not surprised, right? It's just that kind of EA bias they have towards Messi. But Vinny's going to get a team of the year card. And so are a lot of these other players. They're going to have these special cards. But I think Vinny should be in the main team. You know, once again, right? You look at the player that he is. Now, recently, he hasn't been that great. I'll say this, right? Recently, I don't think he's really been playing well. I saw him in a cup game, in a Super Koopa game. He just, he, it didn't look like he, he was himself. Right? I think he looks a little fatigued from the World Cup. Uh, but he didn't really look like himself. But when you look at the beginning of the year, this guy was just cooking. So scary. So scary. I mean, you know, the amount of pace. He is the Brazilian. Like, he's, he's like Mbappe. Just shorter. That's it. With shorter legs. And he's Brazilian. Like, that's like a deadly combo, right? Imagine having the playing style of Mbappe just with probably more balance and more skills. Shorter legs, sure. So, because that's what, what happens with Mbappe is his stride is very long. So, he runs really fast. He looks really fast. But Vinny, even as a shorter guy, he's rapid. Rapid. He's too fast. And so, having Vinny here is, uh, is important, I think. As a player... I think he deserves to be in this best 11 in the world. He was one of the best players in this world. And the way he performed, I don't see why he shouldn't be. Uh, especially in that Champions League run in La Liga. You know, beginning of the season was good too. But, you know, recently he's been kind of fatigued from the World Cup. But he had a decent World Cup. He had an okay World Cup. Nothing crazy, right? I think, like I said, a lot of these players that are on the short list, they're not kind of making it because of fatigue, you know? Uh, they just haven't really performing well. So a lot of people are going to have their recency bias and be like, ah, oh, he's not playing that well. He's not playing that well. And, you know. But I remember, bro. I, I have to remember because uh, that was traumatizing uh, what happened to us in the Champions League. So I think I got to I gotta kind of remember it. And I do remember it too, too well. Uh, so, yeah. You know, honorable mentions. Uh, Blau. Great, t great, great year. Right, uh, for Milan, you know, for country as well. I off the bench, amazing for Portugal. The fact that Santos didn't start him, that's why they lost. Santos thought he knew he was doing after he beat Switzerland, which don't get me wrong, that was a good win against the Swiss. They're a really good team, but he thought he knew he was doing, and pff, didn't start his best players, right? So. Leao have a great year. Should be kind of in consideration, possibly. You know, um, Holland, he was injured last year. You know, I could see him having a card, see him being thought about, but no, nah, I don't, I, you know, not too, not that strong of an argument needed. I think really the only other player is, it's really either Salah or Messi. That could be really considered ahead of Vinicius. Um, Salah, joint top goal scorer last year. Not really much else to say. And then, you know, what's the Champions League final? Should be an accomplishment as well. But, you know, did he win the Champions League final? No. Did he win the Prem? No. So, I get it, right? Like, I know soccer is a, you know, football is a, is a team game. Uh, but accolades really 
really matter. Really matter. And look, I mean, Vinicius scored the winning goal. They beat Liverpool like that. So, uh, I think, you know, I, I would put Vinny ahead of Salah. It's just Messi, right? And I, if you put Messi ahead of Vinny, sure. But I'll defend Vinny as much as I can. Um, but, but yeah, I could definitely see Messi being here ahead of Vinny. And it's probably, he probably is, right? Uh, if we're realistically going to look at it, you're probably going to have Van Dijk instead of Ruben Dias. Probably have Hakimi instead of Hernandez. You probably have Caicedo ahead of Cruz or De Bruyne, and you're probably gonna have Messi, Messi, Benzema, and Mbappe up front. That's what it's going to be, I think, as my guess. But this is my best team in the world, so I wonder what you guys think. I'm just gonna submit my vote here, make it count, even though it's probably gonna have zero effect because EA is just gonna pick their own team. So yeah, let me know. What your team is, if you guys agree, disagree, and yeah, thanks for watching.